Bo. Come on, Greg. Let's open our Bibles to Mark 16 and right. get right into it. Mark chapter 16. <coughs> Starting at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. I read that scripture because today I want to talk about we lost a dear sister uh, on Friday yeah. uh, in her sleep. And it's why maybe some of you thought, wow, he didn't even announce in his announcements. This guy's kind of cold hearted, but there's a reason for it. Uh, her name is Lachelle House. Uh, a lot of us have known her, you know, she's baptized in 2010 uh, here in Portland. And it's sad when we lose somebody that's so near and dear to us. You know, we've had, we've had, you know, number uh, of, you know, uh, of people passing away lately here in Portland. And, and you know, it, and it really, it, it affects us all, you know, we're yeah. a body. Um, yeah. If you've dealt with death personally, it's not easy, uh, especially when you're close to that person, especially when you love that person dearly. It's hard. But I'm confident, fully confident, that our sister, Lachelle, is with Jesus and has risen. Amen. So I want to dedicate this sermon to her. And I want to read something I read on her Facebook page. You know when you go on Facebook and it's got the little description, you can put like, hey, I'm, you know, wild child, hey, I love Jesus, whatever it is. Well, this is what her said. This was her description. It says, hey, everyone, just wanted to say I am grateful for my friends and family. I love you all very much. Wow. You know, and it just made me really think and reflect about Lachelle. You know, I was baptized in 2011 here in Portland, so I got to know her really well. We you know, we, we have that relationship where, you know, we kind of came up together in the kingdom. We were raised together, if you will. And, you know, the one thing that I just always remember about Lachelle was that she just had this infectious smile. You know, yeah. she was always smiling. She was always yeah. happy. It was just like, is this girl even feel negative things like normal people? Or is she just always happy? She just had right. this smile about her, just this way about her. And yeah. she gave the warmest hugs. Yeah. I just remember she would come up to you and, and just, hey, bro, how are you doing? And really was concerned about how your day was. And yeah. you just felt that genuine hug by her. She, she, was, she was a light to our church. She was a light to our movement. And, she, and she's going to be missed. Uh, and I want to dedicate this sermon to her. So the, state of the, the, the title of my lesson is State of Urgency. Wow. And I have three points for us. I really want us to look at to, they, they really remind me of Lachelle and her character and how she was as a woman and as a disciple, and, and that we can really learn and put into urgency in our own lives. Yeah. So point number one is love one another deeply. Yeah. Go to John 13. Come on, bro. John 13. Come on, Craig. In verse 34, Jesus says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. And it's very interesting, you know, this is a scripture that, you know, those of us that, you know, are, are, are members of the church, we know pretty well. Uh, most of us can probably recite it verbatim uh, of what it says. And, and yet, you know, it... I've read it so many times and I've shared it so many times and I, it's funny how your eyes can skip things that are so plain and I, when I was reading this it says that a new command that I give you a command a command from Jesus the, the same 
command that Jesus says, do not commit sexual immorality, no sex outside of marriage, do not murder people, do not steal, do not lie. He also says, love one another. Yeah. But yet it's something that I know for a lot of us, we can just take for granted and not, not take to heart that this is a command Jesus gives us. This is something he expects for all of us to have, yeah. is this love for one another. Amen. And it just made me just sit back and, and just ask myself to, to have you guys ask yourself, like, is there anyone in the church that you're, you're not reconciled with? Mm-hmm. That you have some, you know, animosity towards maybe some bitterness, maybe, uh, maybe they actually did something that hurts you, but you've allowed your heart to get hard and not to reconcile that relationship. You've mm-hmm. allowed this command not to be a part of your life. You've really, you've allowed yourself to start drifting. And I, and I know for myself that this is something that it, it's very easy for me to do. Someone that was, you know, raised as a single child, uh, <laughs> still have trouble with sharing. Amen. Pray for me. I'm learning uh, how to share. But, uh, you know, being an only child, you get everything. You don't have to share. It's all about you. You know, the world revolves around you. And my grandparents were great. And, you know, they, they made every effort to make my life amazing. But yet when I look at this command to love one another, then it makes me think, well, Satan's the father of lies. We know that. So what's he going to do? He's going to tell us, no, you can do it by yourself. That person hurts you. Don't even mess with them because nothing's going to happen. You are just wasting your time. What you're doing is not going to make any difference whatsoever. So let's go to 1 John 2 and see what I'm talking about here. 1 John chapter 2. We gotta go to John because he's all about love, amen. Amen. Come on. So first John two in verse four, it says, The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. And you know, uh, man, it was, it's been probably three weeks now that, you know, I had, a, I had an incident with our brother Manny. We all love Manny. He's got an amazing heart. Uh, he's someone that how can you not love? Yeah. But as he switched over and transitioned into the singles ministry from campus, it was very hard for him. You know, it's something that, you know, he's done his whole, his whole Christian walk. He's never, he's never experienced what singles is. And so it was very easy for him naturally to just want to pull his heart back a little bit. We've all been there, you know, when things don't make sense or, or maybe they're not as we planned them. It's very easy for us just to not fully be on board. And that was his heart. And I immediately was like, he doesn't care. I don't care. And here I am discipling him, training this guy and raising him up and, and creating a relationship with him that, like we looked at, is a command from Jesus to love him. But yet I didn't do that. And I could tell our relationship was getting, it, it was kind of like the, you know, hey, how you doing, bro? And then you're just like this. And you don't, I, all I do is just hug him and say what's up. And I just hope he doesn't tell me he's having trouble because then I got to listen. And then it's even more awkward because I got to make an effort to say, I'm, you know, it's, your heart can get so hardened when we yeah. don't love one another yeah. deeply. Yeah. And with me and Manny, you know, it took me really digging deep and getting completely open and real and honest about my life. Come on. You know, and my heart was that, yes, I pray that he accepts it. Amen. We, we like uh, when people accept our apologies and welcome us. But my heart was like, I'm going to do this even if his heart's so hard because I need to be reconciled with God, number one. I need to have a relationship with God that you can see when I walk down the street, that this guy is close to God. And and it really took me to having that heart to heart with him to really saying, bro, this is how I felt. I'm sorry. Uh, It's not right. And I tell you what, I mean, within like, two days I'm running uh, before we're having a D time and I see him randomly and this is like not how our relationship was I see him as I'm running you know I'm still kind of I see him hey bro and I you know I, I can't stop because I'm in the workout mode and I realized as I got down the street like really I can't even stop and hug my brothers mm. turned around went and hugged him immediately 
he said, hey, I'll meet up with the, the brothers he was with. And he sat down and he just started telling me about his life. Wow. He just really, he trusted me at that moment because he realized, wow, this brother cares. Wow. Do we all make mistakes? Absolutely. Yeah. None of us are perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes a true humility, you know, a true grace from God to really get open and to reconcile these relationships we have with one another in the church. And and that's how when we bring people in to the church is they see that love. Because a lot of us coming from the outside world or coming from that church where you've been sitting to the same person or man or woman for three months, you don't even know their name. You have no clue who this person is. You might even talk to them every day at church, but I cannot tell you their names or their kids. But that's not how it is here at the Poor International yes, Christian right. Church. And it really takes that sense of, of us reconciling these relationships. Yep. And what I'm talking about, let's go to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. It's so important for us, guys, to, to have that deep love for one another. And you know what? Sometimes, yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit to, to be open. And maybe you're not even going to like the, the response. But is it more about your friendship with someone or is it more about your relationship with God and caring about that person's soul on your own? So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in verse 17 it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. As he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, therefore, we are God's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You know, and it just made me, as I was describing Lachelle, you know, that this, this uh, sermon is about her, amen, is, is that... Why, why was she so full of love? Why did you felt that love? She loved you. It's because Lachelle was reconciled to God. She yeah. didn't have any relationships with anybody that was, you know, the, the, the bumps. You know, right. she, she had a true, pure relationship with each and every one of us. And even if she didn't know you deeply, I guarantee she wanted to. Yeah. And, you know, she just, yeah. she had that heart. So, you know, just really to reflect on how Lachelle's life is and how we can honor her to have that sense of urgency to love one another deeply like she did. So, so we can see this church grow. So we can see, you know, quadruple the number of people here and we can welcome people with open arms and love just like Lachelle did. Amen. 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 Point number two, lift others up above yourself. Go to Romans 11. Romans chapter 11, lift others up above yourself. Romans 11. Verse 17. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. Amen. Mm -hmm. What an amazing passage. When I was reading this, it, it just really it humbled me immediately as I read it that we can sometimes start thinking of ourselves more higher than we are. Thinking, you know, that, that we really deserve things. That, you know, because of our gifts, because of our talents, because of our age, physically or spiritually, that we deserve to be doing A, B, and C. And then we're not doing A, B, and C. We look at somebody else that is, man, that bitterness can come in quick. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience. Man, it, it, could, it could just hit you hard. And I love Paul's heart here because what he's doing in, in this passage is he's talking to the Gentiles, reminding them that, hey, the, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. That they're, the, they're meant to have salvation. But because of their unbelief, their unwillingness to accept the message of Christ's crucifixion, now it's being presented to the Gentiles. And now they're being given the opportunity. And what was happening at the time in Rome was a lot of the Gentiles were getting the heart of, you know, well, mate, I'm better than them. 
because I have salvation. Look at me. Look what I'm doing. And how easy it is for us to get that heart. And I love what it says in verse 18 that, you know, that support, that root is Jesus. And it's not about us. It's about Jesus being our root. So therefore, when we look at it in that frame of mind, that we're all in the same playing field. That God's given us separate talents. He's given us different gifts so we can all use them together and glorify God with all of our gifts as a family. Amen? Amen. If you read, go on in verse 19 here. I got the Holy Spirit turning my pages as well. (laughs) So chapter 11, go over here. Verse 19. It says, You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Wow. Wow. And it, it, it's just, it's that, it's that sobering, that, that, that humbling, that we got to be with God because God says that he'll break these branches off. That it's not that, you know, hey, I love God. I'm good for the rest of my life. Let me go party and do all the old life that I used to live. He's saying that you need to have faith, have belief, live your life for Jesus every day. Because just like the Jewish people of that day, they, were, they, they weren't a part of this root anymore. Now, that doesn't mean that God's not going to allow them back, but there's that humbling opportunity that when we start thinking of ourselves more hard than we ought, like I said, it, it starts allowing unbelief to come in our heart. It starts allowing us to to want to go back to the way we thought in the world, the way that we reason, the way that we acted towards other people, and, and to not live the way God told us to, which is to be that even playing field, to understand Jesus is our rock, and we're all equal but we need to be a team and when we start being individuals when we we start trying to do things on our own thinking that i got this i don't need help i don't need to be open i don't need to love one another i don't need to you know respect this person that what starts happening is, is this hardness in your heart really starts happening and it might be slow at first it might just be something where you're like uh i just you know i have this this feeling in me, yeah, I'll repent tomorrow. I'll just get open next week. Well, as we know with what's happened in the church, we don't know if tomorrow's promised. So what happens when you're in that feeling of being in sin and, and you're waiting till tomorrow, you know, or the next day? It's We need to have that urgency to get the junk out of our heart. That's why a lot of times when we pray, when we come into service, throw off everything that hinders. So when we're walking into church, we're not dragging all that garbage with us because it's a pure place. This is holy. We, we're God's people. We don't. We shouldn't be bringing all this stuff in there. Now, if we have issues or we have a bitterness, or whatever, definitely get with the person and go talk or, or go get open with somebody and, and get healed. Because the biggest thing that I see with myself and with others is we allow this stuff to fester. You know, it starts with something like bitterness or comparing yourself to somebody else and you don't deal with it and then it turns into, you know, a snappy attitude and, and, and then it goes to an impure thought and, and by that time you got like 15 sins piled on top of each other and you realize like, dang, I'm back in the world. Like, what happened? Like, I don't understand this. Right. Come on, Craig. But we need to get to the root of it and, you know, thinking about Lachelle, it just made me think of, you, you know, my story in 2011. Like I said, she was baptized a year before me and you know that that really happened with my heart is is I thought I was better than people I thought that you know a, a big thing that I've learned over time is being bigger in stature and, and physical size it's very easy to look down on people and to think that I'm you know something that I'm not and for a long time in my life I always thought that I always thought okay I'm athletic and you know I'm 
tall and slender and whatever these thoughts could be. I'm, I'm better than this person. I'm better than that person. But in all reality, even in the world, I was better than nobody. I was just a drug addict doing heroin on the streets. Come on, bro. But yet in my mind, I thought I was better than this person that had a good career and job because I envied it, because I wanted it. Wow. And I didn't deal with that when I came into the kingdom. I was young. I didn't understand. And, you know, I started getting feelings towards different brothers that they were being open and real like we should. Uh, about their sins and purities. Well, I didn't do that, so I judged. Well, I don't understand how you could do that, bro. That's just disgusting. You're dumb. Wow. Stop. And yeah. that was that was my heart for months, and I oh didn't God. deal with it. I didn't understand it. You know, I was I was so prideful, so extremely prideful that you know at the time was was being trained in the full time ministry, and by, we got to hear those that were here last Sunday, Ron preach uh, by Ron. You know, a father in the faith and. Uh, really helped me in my spiritual walk and and breathed faith into me, but I took it the wrong way and thought, wow, I'm awesome. Like, I'm this young Christian that, man, he wants to see, go be an evangelist and conquer the world and he raw. Like, I'm, my mind started going back to the world where I want to be the best. I want to be the best disciple. Just how like John and James are, like, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? It's so easy for us to be that way too, that, you know, we want all the glory. If any of you got to listen to the live stream last night by Tim Kernan, yeah. He said an amazing point about, man, a lot of you want to be evangelists, but a lot of you just want more hugs. Yeah. You just want more attention. You know, it's not the work that goes behind it of, you know, those of us that, that, that plan the services and do a lot behind the scenes, like we understand, like it is a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work just to communicate, to, to get stuff like this to happen. And, and yet there's really no glory behind it. Right. But there is all the glory behind it because you're saving souls. Yeah. And that's what that's what it really takes for us to put others above ourselves so that we can see others rise up, so that we can spread those gifts and those talents we have into other people. Yeah. And just like the scripture says that, you know, that the, the branches that are broken off, I was broke off for four years. You know, God couldn't have me a part of that root because he can't have anything to do with people that live constantly in sin without repentance. Come on, pray. And I was living in that way and, you know, I, I didn't I didn't respect ultimately all those that paved the way for me. All those that gave their contribution, laid down their life, started their church in Portland, shared their faith with me, studied the Bible, took their time, bought me coffee, all these things, all these people that painted the way of man, I get to enjoy this. I didn't respect him at all by my actions. I had I had no respect whatsoever. And I, I quickly went right back into my old self. I went I went right back into being closed off. And, you know, I, I can do this on my own. And, you know, I don't need the church. I could just go find this other church that's going to tell me what I want to hear. Wow. You know, I did that for a while. And it was just fine. I just stopped going because you're not going to find it. Wow. You know, I searched and searched and searched and did not find it. And it just taught me that you know having a false view of ourselves will harden our hearts so quick yeah. wow. you know because wow. we start putting ourselves on this pedestal that we can't achieve because Jesus is the ultimate example right. and, and we need to live our life comparing ourselves to Jesus That's not right. comparing right. ourselves to one another yeah. right. not comparing right. myself of what I did yesterday or last week but to compare myself of how I can be more like Jesus how I can imitate him more and it's something that, you know, Lachelle never had that. You know, she always put others above herself. Went out of her way to always help people. She was just grateful to be a disciple. Yeah, true. And she lived out this scripture. Let's go to Romans 12. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. In Romans 12, Lachelle definitely lived this scripture out. Come on, bro. In verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Wow. Come on. And it, it's just, man, it's so easy for us when we when we when we go against God, when we go against these commands, when we we go against living 
the biblical way, how Jesus tells us to live, what do we do? Our minds immediately go back to our worldly thinking. Yeah. Immediately goes back into how we were, because a lot of us have lived more of our lives in the world than we have as disciples. You know, maybe some of you visiting here today are just finding that relationship with Jesus and just trying to understand, like, I don't even know how to change my thinking. Wow. You know, well, my encouragement for all of you is get into the Bible study, get with the person that brought you out, yeah. really dig in the scriptures and learn how to change your mind, how to change your actions, how to really yeah. live on. this life that yeah. Jesus Come calls on. us to live. Yeah. And, you know, it made me think about a couple of things that, you know, the, the world has a lot of people believing, and maybe some of us can even fall in this, that materials, you know, your house, your car, you know, your clothes, all these things equal success. Yeah. You know, the more you have, the nicer you have, the more expensive equals success. That money buys happiness. You know, I got so much money that I could go anywhere I want. I, I'm basically on vacation for the rest of my life because I'm rich, but buys happiness. But yet we read about like the singer of Lincoln Park who just lived, he recently killed himself. You know, this guy was a rock star. He was on top of the world. He had all the money someone can buy, all the fame. People knew this guy. I mean, if you if you listen to that type of music, like he was a very talented musician. Like his his songs and his messages were, were very good, but he didn't have God. He still had that hole in his heart that, that he was trying to fill. And for us here that claim that we're Christians, true Christians, it's like, do you have that joy inside you? You know, do you, do you have that true going, man, like Lachelle, like I'm so grateful just to be a disciple. How you doing, bro? How you doing, sis? I'm so glad to be here. I love God. That was Lachelle to me. She was just, I love God. God is amazing. You know, and, and it and it really, as, as I was reflecting on this, it really made me think about one that's out there is sex before marriage. I mean, it's huge. We just got to talk about it and throw it out there. It's, it's something that, you know, that so many people have told me, you know, and those of you who don't know, dating this amazing, beautiful woman back here, Keisha. You know, we've been dating for 13 months, absolutely pure, never kissed each other, never cuddled. The only thing we've ever done is hold hands and give each other side hugs, you know, and but that purity, the purity has allowed us to, to have a love for one another that's real, that I love her because of her as a woman, as her, I love her soul. She loves me because of all the knucklehead things I do. She can put up with me. And it's not the world where they tell you like, well, how do you know you love her? You don't even live together. You never had sex. Like, how does that even work? How do you know you can live with somebody if you never had sex with them? I've had so many people at work tell me this. And I dig right back into these scriptures and show them, well, look, this is how it's supposed to be. You know? yeah. 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 It's just all about us really conforming our minds back to the way Jesus was. And, and I love this quote that says, a true Christian life is a life of sacrifice with heaven as a reward. Dang. So is it easy to be completely pure with somebody you love? Absolutely not. It's hard. It's a struggle. But it's so worth it because heaven's our reward. It's so worth it for those of us that have given up money, have given up jobs, so that we can be more effective for the ministry, so that we can be more involved in one another's lives. It's, it's so worth it because heaven is our reward. We'll, we'll have the, the ultimate. We'll, I mean, can't even describe heaven. We just know it's amazing. Yeah. And God gives us a little picture of it here. So with this, I want to say for all of us to, to really imitate Lachelle in this and not think of yourselves more high than you ought to, to change your thinking today, to, to have God's heart in you so you can test and approve what God's perfect will is. Amen. 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 Point number three, have a heart for the lost. Let's go to Acts 20. All right, come on, Craig. Acts 20, have a heart for the lost. Teach it. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures. But of course, that might change tomorrow. Uh, Acts 20, verse 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Amen. And, you know, just just thinking about, you know, this last week I got the flu to, to start the week off uh, last Sunday. Just, man, after church I was just, I was not feeling good at all. Just getting the body aches and I don't get sick, but maybe once, twice a year maximum. And so 
definitely a baby when I'm sick, I'll admit that. Yes, I'll be humble. But it just, it completely takes me out, you know. I feel like my body maybe does it got to fight extra because it's not used to fighting off sickness. Uh, you know, I've been blessed with a very good immune system. Uh, my grandma never had chicken pox her whole life, had five kids. I didn't get them until I was like 26, you know, and it was just... <laughs> We have, we have this immune system that runs in our family where we, we don't get crazy ill until usually the end of our life, but that's another story. <laughs> and, it, and it just made me think like, you know, I was able to, God's blessed me with uh, 40 hours of Oregon sick time, which is an awesome. So I was able to take a week off work and, and really get better, really uh, to recover. Uh, but it really allowed me to stop and reflect on my life and, and reflect on what I've been doing, you know, where my heart's been at and and how I've really been living out this life of, of Christianity that God calls us to. And, you know, I just, you know, to ask myself and to ask you guys, like, have you been making it all about yourself lately? You know, have you really, it's just been all about you. It's been all about, well, you know, I'm, you know, having a hard time with this or, you know, my kids have been sick or, you know, I just, I can't do this, this is too much, I don't know why that they're asking me to do this or not asking me to do that, and we can really start just reflecting on ourselves and me, me, me type of attitude, and, yeah. you know, and it's really like, have you been missing meetings of the body, you know, due to work, you know, that, hey, well, I gotta just make some extra income because, you know, ultimately, if we be honest, I just don't trust in God 100% to take care of me, wow. you know, I need to go on my own strength, I need to do my own thing, you know. Maybe giving half of your heart because of you, you think your recent problems are too big for God. I'm just not going to give my whole heart because, you know what, God hasn't fixed me yet and I don't even care at this point. But I'm still going to come, you know, I'm still going to show up, but at least I'm just a body there. Or, oh, no. You know, I make an appearance and I'm that guy like, hey Craig, how you doing? And then I just walk away and <laughs> sit in the back of the chair. We've all been there at some yeah, point, all yeah. of us have, 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 yeah, have been there, you know. And it's something that, you know, it's, it's very real. You know, maybe you're just not sharing your story because you just don't feel like it. You know, you just, I just don't feel like it. I, I'm tired. <laughs> I work 50 hours of, uh, of work. Um, those of you that have kids, I mean, it's a full-time job to have kids as well as having a full-time job. It's just, it can be tiring, but is your heart still, when you go out, you're sharing your story, you're sharing your testimony, you're, you're really trying to, to change people's lives by what's going on in your life, you know? Yeah. Maybe things aren't going the best for you right now, but that's exactly what that person needs to hear. Amen. They exactly need to hear that, you know what, I can relate to this person because I'm going through the same thing. Sweet, let's get into the Bible, and they're going to refresh you as you refresh them, amen. amen. Let's go to Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. Go, bro. Have you been all about yourself lately? Luke chapter 9, verse 24. Jesus says, For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. Wow. And you know, it's just that it's, it's something that I've I always admired about Lachelle. That I don't know if a lot of you knew or if you've really talked to her is man she was always telling me about the person she shared her faith with yeah, yeah. every time it was just like Craig I share my faith with this person and this person and this person yeah. it's like Michelle what did you share your faith with like every person you saw <laughs> I mean what was that? that's what I'm supposed to do right that was her heart like <laughs> she was she just wanted to share with everybody she knew that's that's what she wanted because she knew how much Jesus changed her life. She yeah. knew the impact that the church has, that the love that we do get to have and we get to share. And, and when we're here, be protected by what's out there because let's just face it, there's a lot of garbage out there. You know, there's a, there's a lot of false things out there that, yeah, they might make us feel good in the moment, but when it comes down the road, you know, a, a day, a week later, you're just like, this sucks. Like, you're constantly trying to fill this void, but Lachelle knew that that void was God, you know, and, and she wanted to share that with everybody that was around her. She always seemed to be bringing people to church with her. I mean, it was just like, 
Who's this? Who's this? Oh, Lachelle, buy me, Lachelle, buy me, Lachelle, buy me. She should have had her own section of Lachelle's visitors that she brought out to church, you know? And it's just, as we reflect on her life and really honor her, it's really to imitate that in her, that, that we're constantly bringing people out and, you know, we're constantly just sharing throughout the week. And it's not a, it's not a situation where it becomes, you know, oh, well, have I shared this week? It's, dude, I, I just, it's weird when I don't share. Right, you know, I, I'm right. constantly sharing my faith with so right. many people. I have a separate spot in my phone because I have so many phone numbers. I need to go get a, a new uh, SD card because my memory's all gone because it's all numbers. You know, just just having that heart, just being willing to to lay down our own lives, to, to lift Jesus up, you know, yeah. to to put our, our stuff aside so we can really share with people the gospel, which is so beautiful, which we all know. And, you know, a funny story that I have about Lachelle, uh, Sean sent me a photo uh, like a week ago, and it was uh, me and her and Sean Simonette and uh, a couple other sisters uh, that are part of our church. And we used to meet at the Ambridge Event Center over there on uh, 13th and MLK. And what we would do is before service around like 930, we would all go outside and just kind of share like, you know, hey, you want to come to church? And, you know, we're having service at this time and whatnot. And I remember sharing with Lachelle one time. And you know, I'm a young disciple, and it's it can be nerve-wracking. Like, do I, what do I say? Do I want to say the right thing? Because you deep down really want to get people to come and experience. And she just was like, hey, you want to come to church? Hey, you want to come to church? You know, and it was just so pure-hearted and just so loving. And you know what? She got people to come to church just right. doing that. And yet, a lot of us can just, I gotta, I gotta have like this written down, okay, hey, my name is Craig Davidson, uh, you know, I'm a member of the Port International Christian Church, you know, we can, we can just make it something so big, and, and yet it, it's just, you know, sharing your heart, you, did, you just want to generally have people come and, and experience what we get to have on a daily basis, because, you know, I was coming today, and I was praying, and just really thinking that, you know, there's multiple people out there right now that you know they're they're at that ends rope of wanting to take their own life but yet they one smile from you one one just how is your day could totally save and change their life there's so many stories in the kingdom of people uh that have gotten there you know there's this uh story that i remember uh, that kip shared a while ago that you know when he he shared he always shares with his uh, server when he goes out to eat and he was sharing with his server at this at this restaurant and this guy was like, he called every person he knew, therapists, best friends, people that were professional uh, in like psychology and things. And he's just like, nobody can help me. Nobody can help me. I'm going to kill myself. I, I just, I can't deal with this. I'm going to end my life. There's nothing left for me. And he just happened to look down and he's seen the share card that Kip gave him wow. on his, on his uh, uh, carpet. And he's like, I picked it up and I called you and you didn't answer. And Kip was just like, oh my gosh. He called him back five minutes later. You know, and lo and behold, they talked and got together. And two weeks later, this guy was baptized. Wow. You know? wow. And it was just all about just constantly just sharing, just being, you know, just being the people that share our lives with one another that, you know, we have so much common ground with people out there. Yeah. But yet, does it just stop at that, you know? Is it just, hey, how was the game? Oh, it was awesome. And then you go your other way. It's like, hey, I got to just tell you about Jesus. I don't care about Jesus. Amen. Do you want to hear about, you know, it just, we're just sharing with everybody about what God does for us. And to close it out, I just really, you know, reflecting on Lachelle that, like I said earlier, she was baptized here in Portland, 2010, you know, turning from her old life and now becoming this vibrant woman of God. And you know, she ended up moving to Washington, D.C. in 2012 with Rowan and Tracy and uh, because she was really close with them and, you know, to help her faith. But, you know, when she was in Washington, D.C., she really, she started getting seizures. You know, she, she started getting seizures so bad that one of them uh, put her to the ground so hard that it caused brain damage in her. She hit her head so hard that it caused permanent brain damage. And she moved back to Portland. And those of you that knew her from the day when she came back, she might have not remembered your name. You know, she had a hard time. It's just, who are you? Because her long-term and a lot of her short-term memory was gone. Uh, it, the, the hit to the ground really rocked her. But the thing that I remember was, because I was, she couldn't really remember who I was. She, she like, one of those, like, I think I know you, but I don't. And I was just like, yeah, I'm a disciple. Oh, I love you, bro. And she, she just, she had that heart because 
it, it didn't matter. She she yeah. was just so loving. And yeah. if you were somebody, hey, I'm just visiting here from so and so, she'd say, hey, what Bible study are you on? That was just her heart. She just she wanted to love people. She she wanted to j- just be someone that was a light in people's life. And you know what? That nothing ever let the shells nothing ever stopped her from doing God's will. You know, even though that God allowed her to have seizures so bad uh, that they end up taking her life, uh, it never stopped her when she came back. She still kept preaching the word. She still kept loving people. She still kept really giving her heart uh, in all that she did. And, you know, like I said in the opening that, you know, she's in it with God in glory now, you know, that she was taken in her sleep, didn't feel any pain, you know, and it's just so beautiful how God rewards that, that, you know, she was someone who persevered. She was someone who stuck with it and, and, and really, you know, fought the good fight and finished the race. And now she's waiting for us as we're in heaven. And that's just something that's so amazing to me. And so if you, you take the first letter of every point, right? You got L for the first one, for love one another. You got L for the second one, to lift others up above yourself. And you got H for the last one, have a heart for God. It's L-L-H, which is Lachelle LaShawn House. To God be the glory. Craig uh, said so eloquently, Michelle had impacted so many lives here in Portland. Was a wonderful sister, and I just appreciate uh, Craig's lesson about a state of urgency because using her life to see it as a state of urgency. 